What's going on, everybody? Zachary Smith here. Welcome back to another video. If you guys could do me all a favor, first things first, be sure to subscribe to the channel if you aren't already. Leave me a like, hit that notification bell so you don't miss a single piece of content put out over here. And uh, leave me a comment, too. Let me know what you think about the video. Let me know what you'd like to see in the future. Can't stress this enough. This is very much going to be a bunch of miscellaneous stuff just thrown your direction, whatever I feel like making a video about. But this video is part of a series of videos that I'm going to continue to put out, adding one outside free agent to every team in the NFL and doing it by division. So today we're going to do the NFC North consisting of the Chicago Bears, the Green Bay Packers, the Detroit Lions, and the Minnesota Vikings. Uh, some money to be spent here right at the top with the Chicago Bears, which is where we will be starting because we're going to do it last to first. Um in the, each division. So Chicago Bears here. Let's take a look at what they got to spend first and foremost, as I will share my screen here. Um, <laughs> nearly a hundred million dollars uh, in some draft picks. They hold the first overall pick right now. I don't expect them to make a selection at number one. I think that they're going to move back and get a haul to do so. Uh, they don't need a quarterback and there are teams that do need quarterbacks. So I think they're going to have a King's ransom, whoever um, is looking to move up. So it will be interesting, but we're not here to talk about that. We're here to add an outside free agent. So I think that they can be one of the teams to make a huge splash in free agency, be one of the big spenders. They can do it actually, you know, multiple times. They can add a bunch of outside free agents if they really want to. I look at what this team needs though. And I've, I've given them uh, in different mock drafts, Jalen Carter defensive tackle. But you know, if this were to be the case who I'm about to give them, I think they might go a different direction. Um, if, if this player even makes it two four, whatever, but again, we're not here to talk about the draft. They're going Javon Hargrave here is the outside free agent that I'm going to add to this roster. Again, I think that they got money to blow money to spend and they can outbid a lot of other teams. Uh, if they want Javon Hargrave, they're going to get Javon Hargrave. And in this situation here, I think he's a perfect fit for what they're looking to add to that defense. The pass rush that he brings from the inside, again, very hard to find. And that's why I was giving them Jalen Carter. Uh, you just covet those types of things. A guy that can generate that type of pass rush they don't come along very often from the interior and Javon Hardrave did it in Pittsburgh, despite, you know, not playing so many snaps. Then he got, you know, a nice little payday in Philly the last few seasons and really put it on display there being part of some great defenses. Um, so I think Javon Hardrave is in line for another nice payday. And I think it's the Chicago bears that give it to him. So I think that that's a great addition for them and uh, really helps start to, to build that front seven out for the Chicago bears. Okay, um, and then, of course, like I said, we're going to be doing it worst to first. So, so maybe a little bit surprisingly that next on the list would be the Green Bay Packers. Um, yeah, so the Packers situation, they're still trying to figure out the Aaron Rodgers situation, obviously. So who knows what this is going to look like in terms of their cap space. But right now, uh, cap space with all minus 25 million, but the top 51 minus 17 and a half million, uh, give, or give or take. So I, uh, I'm not thinking that they're necessarily going to be making a bunch of huge splashes in free agency. Like even if, um, say Aaron Rodgers does move on, you know, I don't know what the trade capital coming back would be. And, uh, but I would expect that they're not going to be play for another quarterback. I think Jordan Love is the guy for them for a little bit, at least. And you figure out a ways to support him. And uh, that's kind of what I'm looking at here. So we're going DJ Chark, who I don't think is necessarily going to break the bank. Obviously, so some flashes in Jacksonville. Injuries kind of uh, didn't do him any favors towards the end of his tenure there. And he even, you know, was banged up a little bit in Detroit. But when he was on the field, I think that you saw some signs of what he still is. He's not an old guy. You know, I think he's still young enough where he's going to be able to add something. And I think it's kind of more of a prove it deal. Probably more of like a one or two year deal in Green Bay, but they're going to be losing Alan Lazard, I think. And I actually, in my last video, uh, had that happening. So I think they're going to be looking for some some other weapons to give Jordan Love. I think DJ Chark's a guy that isn't going to break the bank, and for bang for your buck, I think he's going to provide some pretty nice value to that receiving room. So DJ Chark's my guy here. Okay, uh, and that brings us to a team that I'm actually really excited about. Um, in the Detroit Lions, because I think that they've really, really started to build something there. Um, obviously, ended the season pretty strong last year, and I think a lot of people are excited about them heading into 2023. I just mentioned <laughs> DJ Chark. Well, I don't think that they re-sign him. 
Uh, they got a little bit money to spend, and obviously, you know, every team can create a little bit more room if there's really a guy that you want, you know. Salary cap, I'm not going to say it's completely a myth, myth but uh, cash over cap, you know, there's always ways to manipulate it. I think that they go out and spend big on corner uh, to pair with Jeff Okuda, who had a little bit of a bounce back last year. Uh, Amani Awarie, like we'll see, you know, what his future holds there. Um, Jamel Dean of the Tampa Bay Bucks, who I think does hit the free agent market. Um, I think that this is something where I looked at what Detroit tried to do last year. I think they really wanted JC Jackson. Obviously they didn't land him, but I think that they're willing to spend at the position here again this season. I think they're going to throw the bag at Jamel Dean. And I think it's a really nice fit. Honestly, I think Jamel Dean has had a really nice little run there in Tampa and has earned a nice payday in free agency. Detroit, I think is going to covet this. I think that they'll look other directions in the draft. Um, I know a lot of people have mocked them corner at six. I mean, it's possible even with signing somebody that they could do that again. Like, do they trust Jeff Okuda based off what he showed last year? Orarie's, you know, future may not be in Detroit. So it's it's very possible that they could kind of double dip there, if you will, free agency and early in the draft. But I think that this, you know, checks a box off and it it doesn't it makes you so you don't have to force the pick, right? You know, it it allows you to maybe look other directions if there's a better player on the board. So Jamel Dean here to the Detroit Lions. And then finally, uh, that will bring us to uh, the Minnesota Vikings and looking at them. No surprise, but I will be going the defensive route here. Uh, Minnesota's defense fell apart last season and really did them in. I mean, that offense, pretty solid, you know, start to finish. Not in a great cap situation, obviously, overall. They're going to make some moves to get under and give themselves a little bit of space here. Uh, but again, it's not going to be a guy I think that you're they're necessarily looking to break the bank on. Larry Ogunjobi, who spent last year with the Steelers, um, actually before signing that one-year $8 million deal with the Steelers, had a nice little payday in line with the Chicago Bears before failing a physical. I don't think he gets near that, um, but I think he could earn another one- or two-year deal, you know, heavily front-loaded, and maybe a lot of that in the form of a signing bonus to make it more manageable for Minnesota, but they need to find something in the middle of that defense to be able to stop the run, provide a little bit of a pass rush for you too. Larry Ogden Joby is a pretty nice player in the middle of the defense. He even had some injury stuff pop up last year with the Steelers too, where he didn't stay on the field the entire season with a foot injury. Um, but I think that he's a guy that Minnesota can rely on to, to get back to, you know, kind of stopping the run, like I said, and giving them a presence in the middle of their defense that they're just severely lacking right now. I expect them to, to look at corner and other areas of the draft. Um, I'm sorry, corner and other positions through the draft. But I think that, you know, the defensive line plugging up that defense, the middle of that defense is something that I could see them address uh, in free agency. So there you go. Larry Ogunjobi to the Minnesota Vikings. And that will, that will uh, be where we end this video today. So that's the NFC North. We're adding one free agent to every team, uh, as we did last video in the NFC South. I think next video we'll do the NFC West, followed by the NFC East, and then we'll get rolling with the AFC after that. But again, can't thank you guys enough for watching this video. Be sure to subscribe if you are new. Leave me a like, hit that notification bell, and comment down below what you would like to see in the future and how you feel about if one of your if these are one of your teams. Let me know how you feel about the free agent pickup or what you would have done differently. Love the feedback. Can't thank you guys enough. We'll talk to you next time. Bye-bye.